Welcoming everyone, James here. This is a special edit for the official Nighthood YouTube channel because they only wanted one video and I went and made four. But anyway, we'll be adding timestamps in this video because it will be a little bit long, so you'll be able to skip forward and get to the bit that you want to see. Uh, but yeah, this is my guide to the Dark Onslaught dungeon. Super quick video today. I just wanted to um, highlight some of the things that I've been using in my Dark Onslaught guide and some of the mechanics that you might not know about that's going to help as you play daily. So, the first one is why do I recommend that you put heroes on the left hand side? So, in this run, there's the two on the back row, it only works with the ones where what summon two enemies on the back and if you watch i'm going to take the one on the right out now with grizz and if you take out the one on the right the one on the left will shuffle along to the middle and then when another one is summoned the one on the left will move back to the left so that one will just stay there indefinitely and if it's a goblin healer or something like that it's going to be able to charge his power up repeatedly you see him shuffle back over to the left now that one is the same original minion now and if you're hitting the right hand side every turn that one will stay there the whole fight but then if you take out the one that's on the left the one on the right will shuffle over and when a new one is summoned the new one will be summoned to the right and then you'll be able to cycle them and by doing that you see them shuffle over to the left now now that's the one from the right shuffled over to the left so you can cycle the enemies just like that so if there are goblin healers you just put macleod on the left and you can cycle through the healers and try and take them out before they get the heal off we didn't actually have any today we've got prototype and he summons the demon healers and these guys are exactly the same it's the ones that summon two on the back row the front row bosses that summon two on the back row they all do this See, I just took the left-hand side one out with Herne base power. Normally on this floor, you see me just use Herne rage, so it doesn't matter so much. And you see it's cycled over to the left, and a new one was summoned on the right. And that's basically how that works. So, yeah, it's a little mechanic that not many people know, and it definitely helps to know. And that is why, when I recommend my Cleod, I recommend you put him on the left. And then, on to another thing. This in the community is known as the Rebel Bug. It's not actually a bug and it doesn't actually pertain to using the Rebel Gauntlet. Just want to get that out of the way. What happens is people see this 27% rage when you gain a buff and they're like, well, I've got the 100% buff weapon, so I can just stand there swinging it, but you can't. And it, the game never tells you why you can't. Nobody knows why you can't, but what happens is Protect, Focus and Fury, if you proc them three times in one turn, it won't work for the rest of the turn, for the fourth move, and it won't work in the, for the entirety of the next turn. They only stack three times, but they don't actually stack, you don't get a Protect on top of a Protect. It just means that you can't proc it more than three times, so it works the same as stacking, where there's a maximum amount of stacks, but it doesn't actually, in practicality, work as a stack if that makes sense so i've zoomed in on the health bar here so you can see the buffs flashing and when i swing the first time it flashed and i got protect and then it worked a second time and it worked a third time and then after that it just won't work <coughs> the fury is only 50 percent, so it's not going to proc on every single swing but if you watch the focus and the protect, they do not work for the entirety of this turn and then I have to go a turn without protect. So this is a thing that you do need to be very careful of. If you're in the rift and you accidentally proc protect three times in one turn and you're relying on that protect, you're going to die. So it's, it's going to be pretty dangerous if you don't know how this works. So it's definitely a thing to avoid if you are using a buff weapon. And then this last one is known in the community as script manipulation. 
You see me using this every time I face Ajax. Ajax is the best boss in the DOD to use this on. And basically, if you stun one of the enemies, he won't summon anymore. Because that enemy can't move, can't shuffle along to make space for a new enemy. And then, once the boss is singled out, if you end the turn on a base power, for whatever reason, they won't summon anymore. And it is as simple as that. It works with any of the DOD bosses. As soon as you get them isolated, if you end the turn with a hero base power, then they will stop summoning. And some of them are easier to do than the others. The back row ones are easier to do because all you have to do is get through the front row. You can stun to stop him summoning more on the front row to get to the back row easier. And then once you do get to the back row, you end the turn with a hero base power. It gets a little bit funny when you're trying to use a rage to clear out all the enemies because if there were enemies alive and you wipe them with that rage, it's kind of 50-50 whether it's actually going to work. But this is known as script manipulation and people talk about it like it's some kind of voodoo magic. It's really not. If you watch my guides, I do show you how to do it. So I just thought I'd give a little bit more of a deeper explanation on how that works. And the reason that I take Ayako for Ajax is because if he summons the Yetis, Melissant stun, it's not that successful against them, but then if you rage Ayako, she has a chance to stun them all and it works 9 times out of 10. So that is why I take Ayako and Melissant for Ajax all the time. And yeah, this is just some of the hidden mechanics that you might not know. Subscribe to the channel for more tips like this if you haven't yet. I have been James B on now. Good luck out there. In this video, I'm going to be covering the Dark Onslaught dungeon again. It's been a while since I covered it. In the first series of videos I did, I did them all with no hero champs whatsoever. So I decided to step it up a little bit for this one. And show you, with just a few hero champs, just a modest amount, I'm going to show you the build that I'm using now. This is an unfinished minion build that I've just finished chiseling. And, and as you can see, you don't get any minions in the Dark Onslaught dungeon or anywhere else for that matter. So these charms are useless to me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to equip one side piece with hero charms on. This is 90%. So if you are still progressing and you're using lower rarity charms, it's going to match up to what you've got a little bit better. And the class that I'm using today is Alchemist. And then to bring the set more in line with the build guide that I did. If you haven't seen that, I will link it as well. I've put an uh, exposed resist charm on the helmet, which does actually help when you're alchemist as well, but we'll get into that further along the video. So the stats are about 120,000 health, and for the armor it is 550,000. So yeah, it's, it's pretty average overall. If you've got all your mythic gear set up, you're gonna have somewhere somewhere in that area of health and then what i'm gonna do as well is i'm gonna plan ahead now since i'm using alchemist for the last two floors i want to save the alchemist speed gauntlets the holy gauntlet and the chaotic gauntlet and i'm already planning what i'm gonna do for those two floors the third floor it don't really matter what class you're using poison for that one poison is just king on that floor it makes it so much easier for you and on the second floor i'm thinking about using geber i don't know how you say it geber how you pronounce it but yeah Geber I'm planning on using him because he hits the back row but as we'll progress we will get into that and as ever the first floor I would recommend to use just a weapon and try and get through it with the weapon now for this floor in particular even if you find it on the fifth and they are level 62 since it's the first floor they're going to be a lot lower level but even if you find it at level 62 on the fifth floor MacLeod is the guy to take for this one because he takes out the healers in the back now you do have to put him on the left because if you put him on the right then they won't change places and one will stay alive the entire time and just keep healing his friends so if you put him on the left and then you take the one on the left out they'll alternate they'll switch places so if you do have a hero that hits the back row always put them on the left and i'm selecting macleod and then any random hero since it's the first floor i just wanted to show you the um the strategy again 
obviously you've seen me do this if you saw the original set of videos as well and again for the first floor i would try and use the knight's gauntlet if you can because that's going to save you better ones for the later floors if you need them but if you want the hunter speed to speed up macleod i would recommend maniacal because the logician gauntlet is very valuable to keep for the later floors because it is so good at gaining rage so the maniacal it gives you the speed but it's still a pretty useless gauntlet so it's worth leveling up the hunter speed on that gauntlet and then leaving it alone and you can use it for this purpose and as the fight goes on what i'm trying to do is because he summoned the undead first it's rng he can summon the healers first and then the stage is set really but because he summoned the undead first i'm trying to wipe one out each turn i wipe them both out each turn and then cross my fingers that he summons them again because they are a lot easier to deal with than the healers in the back and I know most of you will have seen this one and seen him healing over and over again with the minions in the back and it becomes a bit of a pain so that's what MacLeod is for, MacLeod can take those guys out and help you out, his rage is delayed as well so if they are, if the heals are charged and you hit that rage it's going to delay that and then give you more time to wipe them out so yeah MacLeod is perfect for this floor and then on to the second floor we have got Sister Nona she's on the back row uh, she is cult type and i wanted to show you for this floor the champions gauntlet as well i'm saving the chaotic and the holy for the last two floors since i'm playing alchemist in this run i've got 90 percent alchemist equipped so i'm playing alchemist and i'm saving the alchemist gauntlets for the best chance of beating the final two floors and i'm taking geber because geber he hits the back row and he has and he gives you regen he hits the back row pretty hard it's not as strong as Ermus, but obviously there's no recoil involved so Ermus is on a different level but this is very similar to the krella stormwind floor where you always take Ermus. for this one i always like to take geber whether i've got charms on or not and geber works very well with the rebel gauntlet as well he takes a while to charge up i think it's seven turns seven moves before he charges up with any other gauntlet than a alchemist gauntlet but if you watch closely in this fight he summons these militia guys and he summons the undead stabby guys and both of these enemies hit you twice in one turn so what i've done is usually when i see it i take the champion's gauntlet because the champion's gauntlet it gains eight percent rage every time you get hit right if you do the maths uh, that works out to be about 12 or 13 hits if you don't punch at all you need to get hit 12 or 13 times for the rage to fill up i don't know i haven't actually tested it to see if it's accurate but those are the numbers and because all these enemies hit you twice it gains rage pretty decently on this floor if you mix in a few punches and stuff like that uh, i only took eileen just to fill the slot i'm not using it. i'm just using geba for this but yeah that is how i do that one with the champion's gauntlet and then on to floor three it is prototype so the combo that i usually go with for this is the rebel gauntlet i've got the buff sword and i take balendu and herne because with this setup you can gain rage at a decent rate you can gain rage pretty quickly balendu gives you a regen which helps gain rage as well you don't particularly need to be leveled up it gives you regen and herne's poison rage does not hit the cult mech riders armor and if you don't hit their armor they don't use their skill they don't heal and their heal gives them haste so if you see them use that skill where they spin around and that it, they get haste and it heals a ton of armor and then they hit you four times and charge that skill up in one go as well so if they use that skill uh you end up taking a lot of damage very quickly because it charges up every turn that they just keep rinsing it and repeating it so yeah it's, it makes them pretty formidable enemy but if you take herney like this they don't use that skill so it makes them a lot easier and you can clear out those demons every single turn as well to make sure that they don't heal the rest of the team and, and yeah this combo just works it just works And 
and now floor four it's a fan favorite it's ajax people either love this guy or hate him and if they hate him it's because they don't know how to beat him so i'm going to teach you you take the chaotic or the holy, holy gauntlet for this one chaotic is better but as i'm using alchemist i'm saving the chaotic for the fifth floor and you take melissa and ayako and then in the first round you cross your fingers and you hope that you someone's cult because they are level 60 at this point and cult are vulnerable to stun. The yetis that he summons are not vulnerable to stun so it has a larger chance of failing. But you won't see it fail pretty much ever against these cult guys. So what I'm doing is I'm punching to gain rage because I don't have the chaotic gauntlet, I've got the holy gauntlet. Which is not as good. And if you stun one. He will hit you instead of summoning anymore. And then you just keep stunning one each turn until you can get into that back row. I decided to punch this one a couple of times so I didn't kill him. Because the weapon is a chunt of cult. So it's going to do high damage to these guys. And if you finish him off with the final move of your turn, instead of using a hero base power, then he'll summon some more. And yeah, you're better off just taking it a little bit steady there to make sure that you can kill him in the middle of your turn and then as long as you end the turn with a hero base power or a rage power he will continue to not summon anything and keep hitting you and yeah this floor is as simple as that don't matter if it's on the first all the way through the fifth you just use this strategy use these two heroes save them for this guy if you can Millicent poison is very useful for other floors like the prototype one that we just had but if you have Herney leveled up, you can use Herney for that and save Melissa for this, which is definitely useful. And yeah, that's all there is to it. And now onto the fifth floor. I was recommended this combo by a guildmate of mine, and I know that he was laughing when he recommended me it. But I'm trying it out. I've got the Chaotic Gauntlet. I'm taking Carmilla because she's got heals, she's strong versus beast. And I'm taking Dr. Flox. Mine is seven stars, so mine's going to be a little bit more powerful. And you see his rage power there, he has a chance to expose you. I've got the expose resist on the helmet, so it should be okay. It still exposes me in this fight though. And he deals between 40 to 75,000 to each enemy. To all of them it's not distributed and you get 33 percent of that damage in recoil so if there's five enemies it is that times five and then you'll get 33 percent of that damage as recoil and he has a chance to expose you as well so yeah it's a pretty dangerous hero to have i've got i think my health pool is about 650 700k altogether uh so yeah i decided to try this combo out and what you want to try and do is make sure because i've got the chaotic gauntlet if you can fill the rage up and have both the hero powers charged both the hero, hero base powers charged you can use a rage from flox and then you can use both the hero's base powers and then you can rage carmilla to heal it back up again except i did it wrong and i used flox rage too early and yeah you'll see what happens in a minute uh, Dr. Flox has the burn on base power, you're going to see that a lot more often if you are using him. Because the base power is obviously a lot safer to use. I love the rage animation from him though. And uh, yeah, I just got a lot of recoil then. 180k damage and I'm punching to try and uh, get Carmilla rage up. But... I didn't focus on the demons and I ended up getting dizzy on me so this fight is a little bit dicey but it does show you what I've been talking about where you have to try and get rid of the dizzy demons as soon as you can. But really I didn't die though. And what I'm doing is because I'm dizzied I'm looking at the um, I'm looking at the health bar and I've got a decent amount. So I'm deciding whether to swing the sword or use a Carmilla base for the heal or even use the recovery portion I've got. I've got so I've got a few options there. I 
and I'm 1 HP right now so I need to heal that up. I decided to go with a Carmilla Rage to heal that up and yeah this ended up being quite a dicey fight but that Carmilla Rage this is with 90% Alchemist Charms that Carmilla Rage it deals damage to all the enemies it's not distributed and you'll get a heal for each enemy that it damages so it is very good and then her base power heals you as well and she is super useful in the blood moon event when that does come out i will be doing a video and i'll be using this hero as well so you don't particularly need to level her up for that portal but it helps so if you are watching this and you haven't leveled her up yet uh yeah i would put a few resources into level her up because she's actually a very good hero she might get a new skin as well she she's had about three new skins in the blood moon events so far i'm using the latest skin that we got last year right now terribly underrated hero and as you can see i'm taking it slow he's just run out of summons so i'm trying to charge up the hero's base powers now so that i can use both the rages in tandem which is what i should have done in the first place according to my um famous alchemist guildmate and then i use the recovery portion there so that as i go into the next turn i've got plenty of armor and i can try this combo out with the rages and see what happens and dr flox is just devastated but you have to say oh right like this you see how long it took me i just set that up i wasted a portion and everything to try and set this up but yeah flox is devastated and then using both heroes base powers but he did expose me so i decided to swing the sword at the end of the turn even with an exposed resist he exposed me so yeah as devastating as dr flox is he is a dangerous one to use especially if you've got alchemist charms you've just got to plan it out carefully and I decided to finish it off with a Carmilla Rage because I love the animation. And there you have it. That is my guide to using the Alchemists in the DOD. I have been James B. Online. Good luck out there. I'm still using the same useless build. Uh, but this time I'm going to swap in a few Hunter charms. And now Hunter is not the best solution to the majority of these flaws today. So I'm going to be able to show you. There's going to be some flaws where the best strategies for them are outside of your class and you use the same strategies regardless of your class, like using poison and using uh, Ermus for Krella, things like that. So there's things where the heroes outside your class do fit a little bit better. But what I can show you is how you can fit these flaws into your class a little bit better and you show you alternate ways that you can do it with more limited heroes leveled up and then that is the build i've got the buff sword with the protect focus and fury on that is the finished version of the buff sword and i'm equipping useless heroes here i'm gonna go with the next gauntlet and i am just gonna rely on the level 60 weapon to do all the work in this floor and then as it starts off i told you it had an like element of chance to it in the previous video and as it starts off he summons the healers straight off the bat now since i didn't bring macleod which is my recommended hero other ways that you can tackle these guys in the back is poison they're vulnerable to poison so if you're taking Melissa or Herney or a hero like that, that's going to be useful as well. Or Lukin and Macleod is an incredibly effective combo for this floor. And you can use Lukin's Rage to get the poison up, use Macleod to take out the one on the left hand side, and it synergizes with the Logician's Gauntlet beautifully. Uh, you could even use the Macleod Rage for an odd delay here and there in that strategy. There's a lot of options with that one very good for if it's later on if it's on the fifth floor and stuff like that but since this one is on the first floor what i'm doing is i'm taking out the front line summons with the weapon i don't have a hero that can hit the back row hard enough i've brought eileen and camille these heroes are practically useless in this setting i just brought them to fill out the heroes lots to demonstrate to you uh, what's happening i do use uh, eileen rage here because once I've cleared out all the summons, I want it to get exposed just to help that along. And then I clear out this guy with the weapon. It's tuned to Goblin and it is level 60, but it's got all the buff charms on it. So it's not it's not heavy on the damage. If you do have the crit hammer, that would work a little bit better for this. 
Uh, but yeah, that's the first floor. And then on the second floor, it is Sister Nona again. I don't know why they keep giving me similar sort of lineups, but this is what we've got. And I could have took, taken Geber for this, but since I already showed you Geber with the Alchemist charms as well, I decided to use a Hunter Hero. I decided to use Caliban because I've looked at the lineup and I'm not planning on using him on the further floors. So it's quite important to plan ahead when you're doing this daily. And I am using the Champion's Gauntlet because it synergizes with the enemies on this floor very well and it gives you rage as I've explained to you. And the plan here is because I've got the 100% Hunter Charms equipped, I'm planning to capitalize on them and use Caliban Rage. He's gonna deal heavy damage to the militia guys on this floor. And I'm trying to get into the back row. I'm not actually successful. I have to defeat all the summons first, but because Caliban's Rage heals you as well. The numbers are identical to Hermes's Rage. So if you boost in Hunter Charms, it is very effective. When there's multiple enemies, you get a big heal. You get heal from each one. He's strong versus armor as well. And his max start is strong versus acid, which is next to being useless. Gotta be honest, you would have to pair with Lanasa. And then rage Lanasa, and then charge your rage again. And rage Caliban. And then hope that they've still got some armor left, because if it takes all the armor, then you lose the strong versus armor bonus. And then you're only stuck with the strong versus acid bonus. Um, so yeah, absolutely pointless. But that is what it is. And that is how I did this floor today. I would recommend using Geba as a staple if you can for this one. Because, yeah, that's the best way to do it. I'll be showing you alternate ways in this clip. And then floor three is Ram. Is that Ram? I don't know how you pronounce any of these names, you know. These made-up names. I don't know how you pronounce them. But anyway, floor three is Ram. That's how I'm saying it. For this one... I'm taking the Logician's Gauntlet, I'm taking Lukin, and I'm taking Mika. And this is a super effective combo for this floor. There's many ways that you can tackle this floor. If it's lower down, if it's like on the first and second, you can just use your weapon to do that. But since it's a little bit higher up, I'm going to show you this combo. And what you do is you attack the first one like that, and then you use Lukin to stun the second one, because they've got the Protect, and if they get the Protect off, it makes it a bit of a pain to get through and get into the back row. You have to beat them both on the same turn to get to the back row because then it'll keep so many ones on the front row. It's exactly the same as the normal onslaught, floor 5 and floor 10. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rage Lukin, which poisons everything. It's going to clear out that front row for me and get me into the back. And then because the Logician Gauntlet gains rage so fast if i use a either of the base powers here i'm gonna get about 45 percent i think it is of rage and all i need to do is punch once and i can rage again and then once the minions are cleared out i simply finish it off with a Mika rage and it went as quickly as that this one a very good combo for this floor and then we've got prototype on the fourth floor. The method that I take for this one always is poison. Uh, but since there's no Ajax, I decided to take Millicent and Ayako. Millicent's poison is better than Hernie's poison because her max star ability is to increase the poison by 100%. That's not times two. It doesn't double anything. It's 100%. So it's like, um, it's the same as Poison Charms really, it's 100% off the base power. Now Poison Charms stack on top of that 100%, but it's not double. There's a lot of confusion around the terminology in this game. Um, but everything stacks. It never multiplies, it's always additive and everything stacks. So your Focus Charms on your weapon, they stack to other make 100% chance. Protect charms, two of them make 100% chance. Hero charms, they all stack and it adds on to the base of the hero's power. So our Melissant will do double the standard poison of what Hernie does because they're both the same rarity, so their base poison damage is the same. 
because she gets the 100% boost. And then all you do is you've got the chaotic gauntlet. You just keep using the two heroes base powers and punching. Swing the sword for protect and fill up that rage. It's going to be properly efficient. And that is all you do. You just keep stacking up the poison. The poison is going to take out the demons each turn so they can't heal. And it's going to take out the cult mech riders and make sure they can't use their skill because you're not attacking their armor. And it is as simple as that for this floor. And then on floor 5 we have got Krella Stonewing. The best strategy to take for this, whether you have got warrior charms or not, is Ermus. And if you don't have warrior charms, what you do is you take Ermus and the Dark Gauntlet and Critter. Because then you can gain rage quickly and you can use Irma's rage power to heal up the recoil that it does to you and any damage from the minions, from the enemies. You can heal up all that damage through Irma's rage because it heals the same as Caliban, it heals per enemy. So yeah, even if you don't have any warrior charms, if you do have warrior charms, Irma's can just walk up and one shot this guy on floor 5. You're going to need about 200%, I think it is. I'm not entirely sure on those numbers, but uh, yeah, if you've got Warrior Jams, it can one shot it. If you don't have Warrior Jams, what you have to do is you have to bring either Critter or Brutus with the Chaotic Gauntlet, Holy Gauntlet, and make sure that you can gain rage quick enough to heal up any damage as you use Irma's base to slowly chip away at the boss in the back. At this time, I decided to use a slightly different strategy because everybody knows that one. Uh, so what I did is I took, I taken Brutus with Lanasa and what I plan to do is just keep using Lanasa Rage because that's going to weaken everything. She is max stars here. That's going to weaken everything. It's going to keep the incoming damage low and it's going to keep applying acid to the boss in the back. And by doing that I can just slowly chip away and I'm not really in any danger at any point in this fight. It just takes a while longer and I just wanted to show you a bit of an alternative strategy. So yeah, this is floor 5. And that is my guide to using hunters in the DOD. I have been James BO9. Good luck out there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to equip just a modest amount of hero charms for each class that I am displaying. So this is 100% warrior charms and this is going to help simulate if you sort of you're a newer player and you follow in the build guide and you just you're in progress with your build so you've got a few hero charms and you're starting to take the direction of moving towards one class now and then onto the first floor it is prototype now i normally always use poison for this guy but since he is on the first floor i'm simply taking the knight's gauntlet the level 60 weapon and a couple of useless heroes i'm taking bayani for expose which does help and even if he's lower level he has a good chance of landing that expose so yeah it's quite useful i don't know i don't know if i'm pushing by saying maybe about level 30 level 35 that expose will work there but yeah the chance of him exposing is actually quite high even if he is lower level so if you do have him try him out I wouldn't recommend rushing to level him up because he's pretty much useless outside of that. But for his utility to get the expose up on a single target, the chance is pretty good with this hero. And yeah, the strategy for the first floor is basically just use your weapon. He's got the demons in the back which have the cleanse which cleanse the expose. But then by any charge is pretty quick. So you can get the expose back up and then carry on dealing your damage. Wei Feng does do quite a lot of damage to a single golem target. But, again, its usefulness is limited because he only hits one target. So, yeah, I don't recommend leveling him up. But if you do have him leveled up, um, yeah, it's a good pick. He can deal quite some quite heavy damage. But, yeah, uh, you could use any heroes for this, really. And it would work just as well. It just might take you a little bit longer with those cleansed demons in the back. And then, on floor two, we've got Ajax again. So, I thought... Instead of just using Melissant like I normally do, I thought I'd show you a slightly alternative route that you can do. So I'm taking the Maniacal Gauntlet, and I'm taking Lokin, and another random hero, can be anyone, don't really matter. 
and basically the premise is exactly the same if you have the hunter speed gauntlet Lukin will charge in three moves and he has a chance to stun on his base power the only thing is is he deals a little bit more damage than Melissa on the base power so you've got to be careful and make sure that you don't accidentally finish this guy off before you get the stun off on him so yeah you see he did quite a lot of damage there whereas Melissa she'll only do a little sliver of damage with her base power uh, but yeah and that is all there is to it really once you do get into the back end the turn with a hero base power or a rage power and you are aware it is simple as that for this one and now i know what you're thinking this is a warrior guide and i'm using warrior charms but i haven't used any warrior heroes yet so we've got krella on floor three and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use Ermas for this i mean this floor couldn't really be much more straightforward but there are a couple of things that you need to take into account like if your Irma's cat one shot this boss and it's sort of higher up like on the fourth or the fifth floor you do need to take a way to gain rage so that you can heal up with Irma's rage and the dark gauntlet is terrible for rage i mean you could just go in there and start punching and maybe be able to rage by like the second turn or something like that but yeah taking a good way to rage is gonna help a lot so i would recommend critter or brutus to go alongside Ermas for this but yeah if you've got enough hero charms if you've got enough warrior charms he will just one shot this boss and it's over like that and then on the fourth floor it is frecky and for this one i've got the valiant gauntlet and i'm taking lance and logan the reason i'm taking lance is because of the dizzy demons if you remember from the alchemist one i got dizzied on this floor so yeah you don't want to be messing about with these dizzy demons you need a way to try and take them out as quickly and efficiently as you can and lance boosted with a few hero charms is definitely one way to do that and all you do is you start punching and then use the hero base powers when they are ready the valiant gauntlet will gain rage when you use hero base powers and it speeds up the warriors as well it's not as efficient or as fast as the maverick gauntlet which will be the main gauntlet you're using if you're using warriors but the valiant gauntlet it is still very good and because it speeds up the warriors as well lance and logan will both charge in four moves with this gauntlet and yeah, as long as you you get weakened from Logan, and as long as you keep using Lance base power to keep the demons down, uh, Logan rage power should be strong enough to clear out the vampires in the back. And yeah, it's pretty simple this one really, you've got protect from the weapon, you've got weakened from Logan, so you're not really in any danger at any point. And if you do take heavy damage, even despite all this, you can just rage Lance if you want. So yeah, you're going to be absolutely fine. And then on floor 5 we have got Sister Nona. Now, I don't think that Geber is best suited to this floor. In fact, when I did the No Hero Charms run, when I did the original videos with No Hero Charms whatsoever, when Sister Nona turned up on floor 5, I used Brutus and Geber together for that one and the strategy is to just keep using their base powers to stack up the regen and keep piling on the acid to, to kind of clear out the mobs in the front and it works really well as well and that's without any hero champs whatsoever but this time i have got garen and i have got ericsson now the reason i've taken garen is because with this small amount of hero champs it's just it's only 100 percent uh, the rage on it's going to hit the back row. It's not going to hit the back row very hard because Garen's rage is distributed. You're only going to see big numbers when you get into the back really and you try that rage out when she's singled out and she's on her own. But yeah, so what I end up doing is because I've got the Maverick Gauntlet, I can gain rage pretty quickly as it is. So what I ended up doing was using Ericsson Rage because it's not distributed. The freeze is an added bonus at level 62, it's not going to land all the time. It's not worth relying on, but it seemed to work pretty well in this run. But because the rage is not distributed, it's dealing decent numbers all across the board. And then once I do get into the back row, I can unleash Garen on her. And it makes this fight pretty short. When you do have 
a class when you have a dedicated class when you've got the charms in your mythic armor i don't think it's worth leveling up the key heroes for that class before you do anything else but as you start to progress the dod every day there are certain heroes where they just work and it don't matter if they are in your class or not or if they're off class they just work so yeah it's worth leveling up some of those utility heroes as well on the side and this is my guide to the dark onslaught dungeon i have been james b09 good luck out there